thing that motivates us. It's all about contributing to our well-being, to our wellness in life. And my opinion is that if we live a life with purpose, we're already halfway there. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining me again on Wednesdays with Wallace. This is your host, Wallace Patterson. Without further ado, I would love to get into the topic today. And I got thinking about all this because I get embroiled in all this myself, and I have to remind myself of the things that, you know, solve it or the things that sort it for me. So this is the solution. So it's called Three Ways to Solve Frustration. And we all get frustrated. We all get you know, frustrated when things aren't working out. We get frustrated with people. We get, you know, we get, pardon me, frustrated the heck out of ourselves with you know, certain things that go on around us. For me, there's three things. This is what I've learned over my life, and these are the sorts of things that I talk about these things because I know them, I've experienced them, I've done a lot of work on myself, I've done a lot of soul-searching. I'm When things go on for myself, I get into questioning and I get into, you know, thinking about those things, get the earrings out because they're pulling on the scarf. Okay, so the first thing to do... First, 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 start here. What's the frustration? So we need to identify, one, what is the frustration? Is it something to do with work? Is it something to do with a person? Is it something to do with the situation around you? Is it something to do with a group of people? What is the frustration? Now, I want you to take a pen and I want you to get a bit of paper for some of this because writing, there's a magic between here and writing. So I want you to sit down and go, okay, this is what I'm frustrated about. La, 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 la. And it might be a couple of things. There might be one thing and it leads to another, et cetera, et cetera. So what is the frustration? Okay, when you've done that, when you've sorted out what the frustration is, I want to give you the second P to this, the second solution, the second of the three ways to solve it. I want you to look at your frustration and I want you to feel, not so much think, I want you to feel why you're frustrated with that. What is it that is frustrating you about it? And I can almost promise you, I promise, promise, promise you that it will be about being attached to it. So what we want to do with this, you and I, is we want to work on a non-attachment. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm asking you to not think about it to trivialise it, to minimalise it, to you know, make it sort of like it's nothing and you stuff it away. I don't want you to stuff this. I don't want you to feel that you have to push it away, you have to stuff it down, you have to, you know, do that type of thing with it because that's not going to help. It's not going to serve you and it's not going to help you in any way, shape or form. What I want to point out to you and I want to help you with, I want to help you identify, one, what the frustration is and then, two, to see what attachment you have to it. Like an example would be something like this. A person around you is standing in your way <clears throat> and being difficult. You've got something that you're wanting to achieve or you're wanting to do and there's this person or people or group around you who are being difficult and awkward and they're seemingly standing in your way of the outcome that you want because frustrations 
more often than not, they occur because we're attached to an outcome for something. We've got a, 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 a goal. We mightn't see it as a goal, but we've got something that we want to achieve. We want a particular outcome for something. And so we get attached to the outcome. Got that? So we get attached to the outcome. We want it to work out in a certain way. What I'm wanting to help you with is once you've identified what this problem is, person, situation, whatever it is, I want you to then look at what outcome is it that you want from that. There's something particularly that you want to happen around that. It might be in relation to your job. It might be in relation to something else that's going on in your life. But you've got an attachment to an outcome. What I'm wanting to help you with is to have a non-attachment. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't recognise that you would like it to work out in a certain way, and I want you to do that. I want you to recognise that in an ideal world for you, you would like one, two, three to happen, or you'd want something to turn out in a certain way. That's okay, but I don't want you to be attached to it that that's the only way because there is more than one way and there's more than – there'll be more than one outcome or possible outcome to it that you would be very, very happy with if you were able to pull yourself back and able to sit back and look at it like as if you're looking down on it and you're observing it rather than emotionally in it. Got this? I want you to pull yourself back from it. Don't be so emotionally in it and attached to the outcome of it. So one, identify it. Two, take a little bit of time to pull yourself out of that and take a look at how attached you are to a specific outcome because there'll be something that you've really got yourself in. When I was younger, I liked motor cars. I'm a real motor car person. When I was younger and I didn't have any money, I was always wanting to buy a particular motor car, whatever it was at the time. And I used to get so frustrated and so upset because one, I wasn't in a financial position to do it. I really, really wanted it anyway, but I didn't have the money and I didn't have the wherewithal and I didn't have all the things I needed to make that occur for myself. But I was so attached to a particular car or a particular vehicle that I had gotten my heart set on. I wanted that. At the point where it was like if I didn't get that, there was never going to be another car or another thing as good as or anywhere like it. Load of rubbish. In the ensuing years, I can promise you I've come up with a squillion motor cars and a squillion things that I like and a whole bunch of other things that, I, um, that I've either had or, or I've thoroughly enjoyed. So that, that, that concept, that attachment was just was just. It was just me being attached and believing in that attachment. So I'm asking you not to, you know, be attached and be and have a non-attachment to it. As I said, that doesn't mean that you don't recognise that you would like it to be a certain way and if all the stars lined up and the universe was in your favour, could you have it that way? But it may well be that right now for this time it's a little bit of a mi mismatch and maybe it doesn't 
quite line up in the universe and this might not be quite the time for you to be looking at having it in that particular way and you might have to do some, you know, compromising and you might have to do some other things and you'll be okay with that, I promise you. Third way to solve frustration is when you've written it down, you've done your helicopter view of it and sorted that you can be non-attached to this, then I want you to ask yourself, when are you prepared to let it go? And that's really, really important. That's the final, it's like, um, it's like putting a, you know, a bolt through something and securing it with a nut. Till you secure it with the nut, the bolt will move around. So I want you to put the nut on the bottom of it, so to speak, and sort out when you're prepared to let it go. Now, that's entirely up to you. I'm only just saying that, you know, decide when you'll let it go. You can hang on to it. I don't know how long you've been hanging on to it now. And you can go ahead and keep doing that if you want. It's not serving you well. It's not doing anything for you and it's not helping you. And it's just frustrating the hell out of you. But if you want to keep doing that because there's something in there that's a payoff for you, then you keep doing what you're doing. But I'm suggesting you do these other two things and then you go, now, I'm prepared to let it go now, right now, right this moment, right now. I'll let this go and I'll allow what unfolds to unfold and I'll have no attachment to that specific outcome. And you might be saying to me, oh, yeah, but you don't understand. You know, I've got a boss and la, la, la. Nothing to do with the boss, nothing to do with anybody else. It's to do with you and, you know, how attached you are to this specific outcome that's either been set for you or if you let it go, I promise you there'll be something better and of equal value or greater to arrive in your space uh, to help you with that. Love to hear back from you. And if you like the sorts of things that are being said on Wednesdays with Wallace, then subscribe below. Hit the link and subscribe to Wednesdays with Wallace. All the subscriptions really help build our numbers and build this up, which is really fabulous. And I just love chatting on about those things in life that I know and that I've experienced and that I go through myself. And I have my times when I forget what I know momentarily only, hopefully, and have to remind myself that we all get attached to outcomes. And when that happens, then we're in full frustration mode and, you know, all the other things that go with that anger and discontent and unhappiness. And, and that's not the way we're meant to live. If we understand these fundamentals, we can live better and differently. So will you do that for me? Write down what your frustration is, sort it out, get out the outside of it and look at it and don't be so attached to it. Create a non-attachment to it. That also means that you recognise what you would like out of it. You recognise what's going on. You, you're in total, you're totally present and you recognise it. You're just not attached to it to the point where it absolutely has to be that way, do or die, or there's never another, you know, moment in life. That's nonsense. So don't go there. And then when you've done it, just say to yourself, well, when am I prepared to let this go and make it now? Do it now. Subscribe. Thank you for listening. And thank you for joining me on Wednesdays with Wallace. And I will see you next week when I have something else, you know, to chat about. And hopefully I've ventured off on this little thing lately of, you know, helping, giving three or four, you know, tips and, you know, maybe some little things that might be of help in your life and might help you, you know, solve some particular situation that you have going on. If I could do that, I'd be absolutely delighted. Once again, thank you for joining me. Thank you for being present on Wednesdays with Wallace. 
I appreciate you and I appreciate your contributing to this and watching and being part of it. And I will see you next week. In the meantime, in between time, have a great life, be joyous, deal with the frustrations. Bye for now.